This program is part of the Cosmic Potato Podcast Network. For more shows like this, visit our website at CosmicPotatoNetwork.com. All right, you primitive screwheads, listen up. I am Iron Man. And welcome to World War G episode 270. I'm Troy. Guys, I want you to meet a really good friend of mine. This is Troy. I'm AJ. AJ, what kind of name is AJ? What do you race cars? Uh so before we get into it, <clears throat> there was a little bit of a crisis right before you came over. Okay. Um around 1030, sit down here, just tidying up a couple things, and I hear this massive crash upstairs okay yeah massive i hear bowls and plates and and earthquake is a lot of cups your and, first thought no okay cause nothing else was shaking so i rush upstairs and see my mom on a chair holding this cabinet sideways yeah <laughs> this yeah sideways and just broken dishes everywhere dang wow she i guess she's all right yeah she's okay i guess she was taking a or grabbing a glass you know how some cabinets have that little plastic thing that the the cabinet sits on oh yeah yeah inside Mm -hmm. one of those broke snapped off oh dang and so the one side of this um uh shelf went up and hit the other shelf on top Everything came down. Well, on both shelves. On both shelves. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah. A little bit of a crisis there. But yeah, she she got everything cleaned up. She didn't do one of those, like, Spider-Man kind of a thing. You know, Tobey Maguire, catch no. every no. every plate. <laughs> that would have been impressive, but no. Um. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get into it. Uh, with... Today, in Geek History. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird! It's a plane! It's Today, in Geek History! Um, so, this is pretty geeky, I would say. It was on this day, May 24th, back in 1989... That a little movie premiered called Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Oh, yeah, yeah. One of those small little budget films. Yeah. You know, indie film. Yeah. A little independent film. Indie film. Uh, yeah, yeah, nice. Nice. <laughs> I didn't even catch that. Uh. Uh, but, yeah. Apparently, obviously, not his actual Last Crusade. No. Um... I'm trying to think how long it's been since I've watched that film. It's been a while. Same. Yeah. I I keep looking at all these other movies, and it's been kind of nice because we haven't had too many new movies coming out. Yeah. So it's given me an opportunity to kind of go back and watch some of these older ones, mm-hmm. and that's definitely on my movie bucket list. I I like the Indiana, Indiana Jones franchise, but... It's not my favorite franchise, I gotta say. There was somebody uh, recently, I can't remember who it was, that came out and said that that was the best third movie in a franchise ever, in his opinion. I remember seeing that somewhere too. Right? Now you mention it. But I can't think of where it was. And I was, like, I thought about it for a minute and was trying to think if there was any other movies, like third movies in a series, that are better. Like, it's a solid, solid standalone movie. Uh, let's see. Well, you have Return of the Jedi. Right. Um, you have Back to the Future 3. 
Mm-hmm. Both pretty solid films. Return of the King. Return of the King. Right. Ooh, Return of the King. Right. Okay. That, that probably tops the movie cake for me. The same. Um, the one downside with it was seeing that whole undead or the dead ghost army swooping around. I know, I know. Right? You didn't like that part. No. You've said it a few times. I know. But it bugs me. (laughs) It was kind of like, I understand where you're coming from because it's kind of like a, almost like a video game cheat. Right. You know? Um, you just have this army swoop in and literally just kill everything. Yeah. You don't have to really worry. Uh, but there was quite a bit of back and forth with him even, uh, there's more in the book, in the books, but him trying to get this army on his side. Yeah. Oh, Toy Story 3. Oh. Okay. Toy Story 3 is good. It's really good. Yeah. Like right from the, right from the start with that one, when you see that spaceship. (laughs) Uh, spaceship? Uh, yeah. Toy Story 3. The UFO? No? No. Yes. You're thinking number two, are you? Is that number two? Where with... At the very beginning with uh, Mr. Potato Head and all those guys being like the evil guys. Oh. When they're play acting around. Oh, oh, no. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. You're right. You're right. Yep. I'm like, I'm getting these all mixed together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I was thinking of the video game that Rex was playing at the beginning of number two. Oh. Yeah, I for, yeah you're right. Yeah, there was a... Uh, because uh, it looked like a little a Western sequence, kind yeah. of scene. And then all of a sudden it went like sci-fi. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I was kind of hooked from then on with that movie. That's good. It's really good. Does, mm. that, does that take... Does that trump... <sighs> I, that's that's so hard between those two. Ah, they're both so good. They both made me cry. We might have to like throw it out to our listeners. Yeah, maybe. I don't know there is Home Alone three. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, is there a Boo Medea's Halloween three? I don't think so. I mean, cause that for me, you know, special place in my heart. That would take the cake for you. Yeah. Um. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we got we got a lot to do in this show because not only do we got today in geek history, but we also have a list. Yes. Um, I was surfing around the internet as one does on one of my breaks at work, and I just came across this this thought. I'm like, what are the most deadly animals? And so I I start Googling it. This is just like a random thought that you just had while you're working away? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And I found this list in the U.S. Sun. Uh, Yeah, the the world's deadliest animals ranked by number of humans killed. Now, this was published on November 30th, 2019. But I doubt much has changed in little under a year. So, number 15. Sharks. Six deaths a year. See, for as many shark movies as they have, you'd think it'd be a little bit higher. Well, that's the thing. Sharks aren't as deadly as people think. Right. They're not mindless killing machines. They're just waiting for you to jump in the water. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they're, clearly, they're not. Yeah, no, Six deaths a year. Uh, number 14. Wolves. Ten deaths a year. Okay. Now, wolves don't attack often. They only attack like a lot of animals do once they feel threatened. Yeah, once you get in their area, especially if they're, they've got their cub, cubs or yeah, their pups. Yeah, their territory. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Um, but the thing with wolves is they attack in packs. Right. So it's not just going to be one... You're going to have these two other from the side. Six or seven. Or, yeah. Uh, number 13. Lions. Over 22 deaths a year. I imagine a lot of these are from zoos. That one's actually from Africa. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
People um, are going out on, you know, safari. A 2005 study found that since 1990, lions had killed 563 people in Tanzania alone. An average of around 22 a year. I honestly don't know where Tanzania is located. It's in I'm, Africa. Well, I, I get that, <laughs> but like as far as I couldn't no, point I couldn't it out on a map, out, no. no. Uh, number 12. Elephants. 500 deaths a year. 500 really? people. Yep. Killed by elephants. I honestly can't remember the last time that I've heard somebody of somebody dying from an elephant. <sighs> Uh, well, we're not exactly tuned in to, like, African news. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's true. I don't get that channel mm. on my cable box. So um, that's where you believe a... Well, I guess a lot of them would have to come from there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, number 11. Hippos. 500 deaths a year. Man, this is all, like, from Africa. Mm-hmm. This is a scary place. Hippos are often considered one of the most deadly animals in Africa. Oh, they are super aggressive. Yes. They are mean. I would I would take a I think a hippo would I've seen like fight a lion before and just like mm. beat the crap out of it, especially if it gets in the water. Like Yeah, hippos for. are like they're just tanks, you mm. know. Yeah. I mean, they can weigh up to 9,000 pounds. It's yeah, like you, an you aggressive elephant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number 10. Tapeworms. 700 deaths a year. A surprising addition to the list is the tapeworm. The parasite burrows into your gut and causes an infection called cystocerosis. Cyste, cystocerosis. Bless you. Cystocerosis. Sister cirrhosis. It's going to be my new heavy metal band. Oh, yeah. Sister Cirrhosis. <laughs> right up there with, like, Cheap Trick. Mm-hmm. And it, it's probably an 80s band, dude. It probably is, yeah. if you look it up. <laughs> Number nine, crocodiles. 1,000 deaths a year. See, this one, we... This is the first one on the list that I've actually heard of people dying yeah. from. Um, you know, like in Florida and some mm-hmm. of these other places. Number eight, roundworms, 4,500 deaths a year. The Ascaris roundworm causes an infection called, I'm not even going to try that. There's a lot of A's and S's. <laughs> they are the most common form of parasitic worm in humans. It actually crawls in your A's and S's. <laughs> it's all up in your A's and S's. <laughs> um, number seven, the tsetse fly. Around 10,000 deaths a year. These are some impressive numbers Mm -hmm. from, like, things that are so small. These flies can give you a disease called sleeping sickness. It can cause headaches, fever, joint pain, and itchiness before leading to neurological conditions. However, it is thought that the number of deaths that this insect causes is decreasing. (whistles) Number six. Assassin bug. Around 12,000 deaths a year. Like, I want to draw an assassin bug. I don't even know what it looks like, but I think it'd be kind of cool. That could be the next Ninja Turtles. Yeah, this is, or it could be a Ninja Turtle villain. Yeah. Assassin bug. Right. As it, the name suggests, the assassin bug is deadly. They bite and suck your blood. Uh, through doing this, they could give you a disease called Chagus, Chagus, Chagus disease. I feel like we need to change the name of Mosquito. That doesn't sound as menacing. <laughs> like something more, I don't know, assassiny. Death bug. <laughs> Watch out, you got a death bug on you. <laughs> That's actually going to be the name of my 90s punk band. Yes. Death bug. Let's see what your, you know, your 2000s band is going to be called. My 2000s ska band. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number five. Get this. Freshwater snails. No way. Around 20,000 deaths a year. <laughs> snails. Freshwater snails. Freshwater snails carry parasitic, uh, parasitic worms that can give people a disease called... S- Why are there so many S's in these disease? <laughs> Cystosoma... Cyst- 
Cystosomiasis. Miasis. Oh, miasis. Um, just like unproperly cooked or prepared? No, no, no. no. It's not eating them. Okay. This occurs when larval forms of the parasite penetrate the skin when victims come into contact with infested water. Just the water alone. This disease is most commonly found in Africa, Asia, and South America, where millions of people contract it each year, leading to thousands of deaths. I say we just stay quarantined our whole lives. <laughs> Ready for the symptoms? Yeah. Abdominal bleed, ab- abdominal bleeding, okay, and anal bleeding. I knew it. There's always that side effect in mm-hmm. everything. Talk about your A's and your S's. Yeah. Um, number four. Well, like I believe some of them could probably get like um, really dehydrated, right? Mm. And that could cause issues. But, man, yeah. that's crazy. Number four, dogs. 35,000 deaths a year. Really? Now, this figure relates specifically to dogs with rabies. Okay. Around 99% of rabies cases are caused by dogs, according to the WHO, World huh. Health Organization. Number three, snakes. Care to take a de- uh, guess how many deaths? Uh, 62? Higher. Really? Yep. A hundred thousand? A hundred thousand deaths a year caused by snakes. Wow. Uh, Snakes are thought to kill around a hundred thousand people each year, but the number could be much higher as reliable data from all countries with deadly reptiles has been difficult to obtain. Number two. Had to throw this on here. Humans. Yeah. 440,000 deaths a year. We're killing each other. So this is how, I don't know, this is how we decrease the surplus population. <laughs> um, worrying, worryingly, you are most likely to be murdered by someone you know. Mm-hmm. Statistically. I'm trying to see if there's a direct correlation between these and the amount of movies that we have. I mean, we ha- we obviously have a lot of movies where people are killing each other, right? Right. And we have a ton with sharks, but some of these other, not so much. No. I don't think it has much to do with movies. Okay. Because I think, I mean, a lot of these, as we've read, take place in Africa. No, no, no. I was but... just seeing, like, because uh, typically Hollywood goes with the trends. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right? I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, so I was just seeing if they were actually looking at these numbers and then making more movies to scare people. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't seem like it. No. Especially with number one. Care to take a guess? That beats out humans? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even know. Mosquito. Really? 750,000 deaths a year. Uh, Mosquitoes are the biggest killer because they spread diseases easily and quickly. A mosquito bite can lead to deadly conditions like malaria, dengue fever, and yellow fever. Mm -hmm. Malaria by itself is responsible for more than half half of mosquito-related deaths. Wow. Now, you don't get a lot of those cases here in the U.S. because not a lot of people in the U.S. have malaria. Uh Again, it's more... Africa and those kind of places. Yeah. Which is crazy because, like, they have such huge populations, but with this many of them being taken out, like, at least, what, a million a year just being taken out? Yeah, 750,000. No, no, no. I meant, like, with all these things. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you definitely have a better chance of dying from something like this than old age mm. in Africa, I guess. Seems like it. In Africa, something is going to kill you. Yeah. Some animal is going to kill you. <laughs> like, just get used to it. That's a fact that's going to happen. Whether it's a mosquito or a hippo or a lion or an elephant. Or a snail. Or a snail. Something's going to kill you. Yeah. Wow, that... That's crazy, man. So there you go. 
I actually remember as a kid, it was fun when a mosquito bites you to pinch your skin and hold it there. Yeah. So it can't escape. Well, to try to like push more blood into it to almost make it pop. Make it explode. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, I guess we had to worry about the West Nile for a while. Yes. Yeah, we did get that. With all that stagnant water. I'm surprised I didn't get sick how many times I did that. (laughs) I did it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Ha ha ha, it's stuck there. Like, not even thinking that, like, yeah. yeah. That could literally kill me, what I was doing. And it's the number one killer. Ooh. (laughs) I actually thought about changing my gamer tag recently, and I was going to do it, like, because there's all these people, now that on the PlayStation Network you can change your uh, gamer tag, Mm -hmm. I was just like... Oh, I want to make it more like menacing than Alexander. Like that's the, that's not right. terrifying. That right. doesn't strike fear in anybody's heart. Well, I, Alexander the Great, true conqueror. Yeah. Um. But I, w- I was gonna like I wanted to put it as like Beaties or diabetes, <laughs> like number one Beaties. killer in America. Nice. <laughs> yeah, nice, yeah. Nice. But now I feel like I want to change my gamer tag to like mosquito. There you go. Right. Yeah. <laughs> kills more people than humans each year. <laughs> Change it to uh um I forgot my band names now. Shoot. What are my band names? What are my eighties and nineties band names? I don't <sighs> I don't even know. Crap. Uh <laughs> I'll have to go back and listen. Alright, let's get to This Week in Geek. This weekend, geek. Uh, this this article is brought to us by Game Rant, and recently with the newest. Well, I guess back in 2018, Marvel's Spider Man did so well, and it also touched. Um, it had a lot of players visiting locations that were also set in the MCU, which yeah. got people wondering, well, which other people or which other things could we adapt into the uh mcu and with the next gen coming out uh there's been a lot of buzz with game creators working on a daredevil game interesting i feel like this has a lot of potential because you could mix the bet it's like batman meets uh spider-man because mm-hmm. you've got the kind of the witty humor of spider-man and but the charisma and dark broodiness of Batman. Right. So I feel like this could this could really work. Um, too often we have superheroes like Spider Man and Batman in their video games that just kind of like lurk over the bad guys and loom over them. But this one, I feel like they because he can't fly, right? I mean, right. he can he can jump around and do like acrobatic stuff, but at the same time, he's going to be on the ground level. So I feel like if they were to incorporate a lot of lawyer um, detective work into the mix and also have some like gritty fights that you can't just jump up and perch yourself on a tree and get away from the bad guys for a minute to re- recoup your health. Yeah. Right? You're stuck there and You're in. you have to fight it out. Yeah. Huh. Um, that could be interesting. It, it'd be cool to... Be able to switch back and forth from um, Matt Murdock to Daredevil. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. Um, and I also feel like the final boss battle should be uh, set in the courtroom. Oh. Right? Mm-hmm. And if you didn't, like, get enough clues and you didn't get, like, all the your facts straight and also uncover a lot of stuff, um, you're going to lose this court case. <laughs> lose the case. Yeah, and that you would be lose cool. the game. You get that like a cool. you get. There's either a good ending or a bad ending, right? Depending on how you do in court. Hmm. I don't know. I think it'd be, be interesting, interesting to kind of mix it up, right? Yeah, there's there's some places that you just can't get in or won't be able to get into as Daredevil, so you got to change or become Matt Murdock. Then you can get in. Yeah, more doors would be open to you, you know, as a lawyer. Yeah, and if you change back to Daredevil, you know, then you you'll lose that level or whatever. Yeah, that'd be cool. I I just don't know how you'd exactly do the because uh, there was this game like back in the day on the PC Monkey Island. 
Did you mm-hmm. ever play that one where you were a sword fighter? Like at certain points, you were fighting somebody, but you also had to to use your witty repartee, mm-hmm. you know, um, to battle them, to battle them. And if you didn't have those lines, then you couldn't really say any witty comeback to them, and you'd start losing the advantage. <laughs> yeah, and it, it'd go back and forth until you actually like finally beat them. Um, I don't know how you'd do that in the courtroom though to make it where the stakes are really super high, but it's set in a court case and still make it interesting for like gamers. Um, you would have to make it, uh, you'd have to either have some way to keep the clues somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you're carrying a notebook, notebook or something, or make it to where the player himself or herself has to write down what they think might be clues. Okay. And then at the very end, you know, when you have to um, do your disposition right. to the judge, you know, you can start to fill in the blanks, basically. Okay. Um, Ooh, you know what would be really cool is if, like, right from the get-go, you are in court, and then they ask you, like, these other, you know... This other, these million dollars, like, lawyers that are helping out Kingpin are sitting over in one corner, and you're over in your little corner, and then you go to, like, call a witness, but then it does a flashback, and then you actually have to acquire that witness Mm. and get that person. Nice. Right? Um and then, like, so it's, like, constantly going flashbacks, and then when it goes back to the courtroom, he's just like, well, you see, and then... It flashes back to when you actually got that piece of evidence or that clue. Gotcha. So, so the court case is a uh, kind of a uh, it, it's a run or it, it goes through the entire game, right? Like it keeps flashing back and forth between the court case that you're in and then flashback. It would be it'd be kind of similar to like um, what is that Slumdog Millionaire? Right where where the he gets his answer. You've seen this one, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, where he gets his answers from previous past experiences. Yeah, right. Something something along that lines. That would be cool. And then at the very like the very end, you kind of like wrap it all up and save the day. That would be cool. I don't know. Then maybe to set up the sequel, like the very end, you could be outed as Daredevil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or something like that. Then they could have the next game where you're facing that whole problem. It could be interesting. Where everybody knows who you are, mm-hmm. you know. You can't really hide behind the blind facade. Yeah, you can't use yeah. can't use the Matt Murdock persona anymore. Yeah. Oh, I don't know where I'm going. Yeah. Like, you're Daredevil. <laughs> like No, funny thing about um I always thought it was funny about Daredevil. Is that he's the... Are you going to make a joke about blind? No. No, <laughs> no I'm not you. <laughs> is that he's he's the devil of Hell's Kitchen, right? Yeah. Hell's Kitchen is just a little neighborhood right. in New York. It's not even that big of an area. No, it's not. It's, yeah. A couple of blocks? It's 538 acres. Really? hmm <laughs> In the Manhattan 4 District. And that's what he's the devil of? Yep. There's plenty of things to do nearby Hell's Kitchen. You can go to Hearst Tower. You can go to Central Park. You can go to uh, the Bane Haunted House. Okay. You can go to Pier 86, West 46th Street. All kinds of stuff to do (laughs) while you're in Hell's Kitchen. Everything to do is outside of Hell's Kitchen. Right. But, you know. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like the the devil of Ogden. Yeah, right. <laughs> not 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 even Ogden. Like the devil of these few streets. <laughs> like that's it. Yeah. Huh. He wouldn't have much f- crime fighting to do. Mm-mm. No. No. But I guess that also makes sense because that's about the range that he can hear people, right? Right. In a neighborhood. Right. 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 He's not going to be able to like hear an entire city. He's not like Superman. And and it's always depicted as this grimy, dirty city. It's not. Hell's Kitchen is actually a pretty, a pretty affluent neighborhood. Yeah. 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 Do people that live in Hell's Kitchen, are they kind of upset about this? I don't know. I mean, I'm it'd be sure. cool to have like a superhero 
um, you know, based out of your area. Mm-hmm. Adjacent to the theater district. Here, we're going to learn about Hell's Kitchen. Kids. All right. Yes. Adjacent to the theater district, Hell's Kitchen has long been the home of actors and arts organizations. It's also a hub of gay culture. Pre- and post-theater cow- cl- uh, crowds from nearby Broadway. Tourists from Times Square and workers from office high-res jam the international restaurants, bars, and pubs along 8th and 9th Avenues. Farther west, along the water, Hudson River Park has landscaped walkways. Now, doesn't that sound just like a crime-ridden, terrible place to Dirty, live? Dirty, grimy place. Yeah. yeah, that sounds horrible. They're like, actually, in the theater. And then like, ah, get mugged. <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe when Stanley created Daredevil, maybe Hell's Kitchen was that type of neighborhood. Right. I don't know how it was back in the 60s. But now, it's a perfectly nice place to they live. They probably took offense to that initially, and they're like, we're going to clean up this community. We're <laughs> going to make it a great place for people to come. My guess is he created Daredevil... Like, well, devil, devil, where, where could he be? And he's looking on the map. Hell's Kitchen. There we go. Make him devil of Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Because devil in hell. See, it fits. I'm Stan Lee. Write it down. Give me a check. <laughs> and they did. And they did. They gave him lots of checks. Yep. All the checks. Um. So there you go. Now you know more about Hell's Kitchen than you ever wanted to know. I want to visit Hell's Kitchen. I kind of want to visit Hell's Kitchen now, too. Right? Ah, go catch a theater. I'll you go know, hang out like with the actors in yeah, the yeah. gay crowd and go have a drink. <laughs> Absolutely. It sounds like a great time. Um, so, if you remember last week, we, we brought up uh, the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 being remastered. Yes. And we brought up the soundtrack. Particular, particularly the song Superman by Goldfinger. Mm-hmm. Well, the soundtrack just keeps bringing in more and more drama because there's a petition now to keep Headstrong by Trapped off Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 soundtrack. Wow. These parents, they just don't understand. Us <laughs> skaters, we just want to skate. Thanks there, Will Smith. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a tweet by Game Rant, okay? Yeah. Petition to keep Headstrong by Trapped off Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. Soundtrack is blowing up, okay? Here's a tweet by Trapped, the official Trapped. Yeah. 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 Trapped Headstrong was never in Tony Hawk Pro Skater, but a lot of you sure thought it was. <laughs> I cannot believe this lasted as many days as it did. That is awesome. People just want to get upset about nothing. But here's another one by the official Trapped Twitter account. Hashtag uh, cancel culture. Adult children of Twitter don't realize the massive press that would be generated for Trapped if, at Tony Hawk, actually listens to these intolerant Libyates. Yeah. Ooh. And takes Headstrong off a game I played so many times. Uh, I played so many times myself because I support Trump. What? That's just such a random, like, pose. Actually listens to these intolerant Libyates and takes headstrong off a game I played so many times myself because I support Trump. (laughs) So are they going to take it off because he supports Trump? Because liberals don't want it on there because he's a Trump supporter. But he was never on it to begin with. Right. So, none of this makes any, <laughs> any no. sense. I Like, and before this uh, tweet, I almost think that they should have put that song on there just because. Like, just, I don't know, just to be kind of funny. Just like, screw with people? Yeah, it's like un- unlocked, you know, if you get all the tapes in one of the areas, then you unlock a new soundtrack. <laughs> I would be very disappointed if I went through all that time, uh-huh. unlocked the special soundtrack, and the first song I hear was Headstrong by Trapped. My uh, growing like, up really? when that song came out, and we'd rock it like in the car with like my parents, and we were like jamming to it. <sighs> my dad like 
hated that song. Like it's he, a stupid song. Yeah, no, but like he seriously hated that song. He's just like, oh, it's just teaching kids like to you know be I don't know be rude and I don't know. And we purposely like listen to it louder and like memorize the song and the lyrics just because. Here, let's read some of the lyrics to Headstrong, shall we? Yeah. <clears throat> Circling your head, contemplating everything you ever said. Now I see the truth. I got a doubt. A different motive in your eyes, and now I'm out. See you later. I see your fantasies. You want to make it a reality, baby, paved in gold. See inside. Insides of our heads, yeah. Well, now that's <laughs> over. I see your motives inside. Decisions to hide. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yep. Back off. I'll take you on. Headstrong to take on anyone. I know that you are wrong. Headstrong, we're headstrong. Yeah. Very good, rhyming headstrong with headstrong. Good uh. job. Back <laughs> off. I'll take you on. Headstrong to take on anyone. I know that you are wrong. This is not where, where you, you belong. belong. See, I mean, it's like... Mm. It's like Shakespeare, really. I'm going to jam out of the song like as soon as I leave here. <laughs> Just because. <laughs> well, listen for, to X96 for like 30 minutes. It'll, it'll yeah. pop up. Yeah. <laughs> 90s at noon. <laughs> yeah. Local radio station slam. Yeah. <laughs> that nobody knows except if you listen here in Utah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh. That's just so so random. I think if they would have just like kept quiet, they would have gotten so much support from people and probably gotten this song on the soundtrack just because. Sure. But. Because it seems to me like the creators of the Tony Hawk games would be the kind of people that are like, yeah, let's just throw it on. Mm-hmm. Just, just, just because. because. Yeah. And that was my biggest like worry with this going forward. And they've already since released the whole um, soundtrack to both of them. And there are some songs that are missing from it, but at least they have like the ones I really care about. Um, but that, that to me made up the half the game, right? Right, right, it was right, right. The right, soundtrack right. and it was the game. Um, I'm trying to think of any other games that are really like that, that I, I love the soundtrack. Well, okay. There's like scores to certain games that I'm like, wow, this is like, really impressive but 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 yeah i would call i would call those scores not soundtracks right like i don't know any other game myself that has like a soundtrack of like actual songs Mm -hmm. you know well grand theft auto vice city right that had a lot of 80s songs on it i remember when you uh, were flipping through, through the radio, radio station, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah same, even like GTA Five has has quite a few as well. Okay, but I don't know nothing nothing to that extent where that actually. Ooh, Crazy Taxi. Oh, okay, remember Crazy Taxi? Did you ever uh, play that? I didn't. No, I played this like the Simpsons one of it. There was an Offspring song that they played on Crazy Taxi, mm-hmm. and it was the song like Superman that just. Played all the time. That just stuck in your head. You get stuck in your head. Yeah. I can't remember which which song that was. I don't know. know. Yeah, I'm looking through the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 2 soundtrack. There's Police Truck by Dead Kennedys. Mm -hmm. Here and Now by The Ernie's. Superman, Goldfinger. Oh, yeah. Jerry Jerry Was a Race Car Driver by Primus. uh, Psycho Vision by Suicidal Tendencies. Psycho Vision. Ba, 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 da, da, da. Yeah. Committed by Unsane, uh, Euro Barge by The Vandals, Gorilla, Gorilla Radio by Rage Against the Machine, Ooh, that's good. You by Bad Religion, uh-huh. Bring the Noise by Anthrax, When Worlds Collide by Power Man 5000, Pin the Tail on the Donkey this, by Naughty by Nature. This seems like a Vans Warp Tour kind mm-hmm. of a thing. Blood Brothers by Papa Roach, B Boy yeah. Document ninety nine by The High and Mighty, Mad Skills and Most Deaf. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Five Lessons Learned by Swinging Utters. <laughs> That's a great name. Yeah. No That's cigar. Way better than the names that we just came up with. Yeah, it's pretty good. No cigar by uh, Malen Colin. Malen Malen. 
Melancholin. Oh, okay. Right. Melancholin. That's what it is. Um, May 16th by Lagwagon. That's another good name. And Evil Eye by Fu Manchu. That was like the soundtrack. <laughs> that might have been like it could say the soundtrack to my middle school years. Yeah. <laughs> All those songs. Did you did you have both those games? Or oh no, you said you went up to Joel's. I went up to right? Joel's and played them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we played them a lot. They are so great. Once it, and it was actually pretty challenging to get huge crazy scores unless you were um really good or getting like super big air. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that was actually I that's an actual Spotify playlist that you can get. Really? Mhm. Oh man. So there you go, kids. Check it out. Or adults, middle-aged adults our age. There you go. <laughs> um so Ruby Rose is going to be exiting uh the CW as playing Batman. Batwoman. A Batwoman. They've already got like for season two. They've already got uh, a couple mm. of people in mind, mm. but mm. Mm. she mm, well, she kind of I don't know, just needed to part ways with them. She didn't feel like it was working for them exactly. Well, that and I heard part of the reason was you don't fully understand how long the shooting schedule is per day when you do a TV show. Right. It's 12, 14, 16 hour days. It's pretty grueling. Yeah. Then you get up and you do it all again. Like it's, yeah, it's hard. And then you gotta, you know, they showed up in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. So you gotta go find a place up there for three, four months, however long they shoot. Then you gotta move back during the hiatus. Then move back and it's... While you're Training, learning lines, and doing yeah, everything else. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a lot of work. Yeah, and I don't think that she fully understood the amount of work that would have to go into that. Well, up to this point, what were some of her? I mean, the Meg, Orange um, is the New Black, Orange is the New Black, but it was just more guest spots. Guest spots. Or, yeah, yeah. She was never the lead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, I'm fine with it, honestly. I watched a few episodes of Batwoman. Didn't I just, you say you gave it six episodes? Yeah, I couldn't get into it. I really couldn't. You tried. You're like, all right, this. I mean, it's still kind of the CW set yeah. in that whole universe. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm a fan. I'm yeah. a fan. And, and so, yeah, I I gave it a shot. I'm like, this no. Ruby Rose cannot. At least right now, cannot lead a series. She just can't. She doesn't have the chops. Yeah, she doesn't have the chops. She doesn't have the chops of a or the the commanding presence of a Stephen Amell or a Grant Gustin or you know these guys are leading those shows. Like I just don't feel that. Or or Melissa Benoist over on Supergirl. Yeah, I just don't. I don't feel that. You know. I just don't see her as like a leader. Yeah, but do you see anybody like I mean I know they have some like front runners and contenders to take over this, but do you have any choices? Uh I don't know. I don't know. Cuz it's still going to be the same character, right? Right. Well, okay, so so Warner Brothers uh, Television, CW, this is what they said. They thanked Ruby for her uh, contribution to the success of the first season and wished her the best. The two companies said the studio and the network are firmly committed to Batwoman's second season and long-term future. Yeah. Like, they do want to get somebody that's uh lgbtq um mm-hmm. committed as well right 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 yeah because the character is is gay he's a lesbian and so they want to you know keep that going yeah um yeah i don't i don't know i i don't 
I'm so out of the loop on like TV actresses and stuff. Like I don't know who you could get to play it. Yeah, I I do feel like that you'd have to get somebody that's already familiar with television and familiar with the whole process yeah. and knows what it entails. I think actually, I think if she were younger, I think you know she's not uh, gay, but Mila Kunis, I think, could have been a good Batwoman. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, she's way familiar with the um, the schedule, yeah. television schedule. Yeah, and I think she's a better actress, and she can be both funny and serious. I think she would have been good. Back in the day, I thought she would have been a good Supergirl in, like, a uh, movie. But she, I think she would have been a good Batwoman. But she's she's uh, she's a little older now. She's older than us. Yeah. Not by much. Maybe, well, maybe she's actually a little younger than us. Is she now? I don't know if she's how old she is. Mila Kunis age. I always feel like her last name is like an insult, like calling somebody a Kunis. <laughs> you dumb Kunis. None. She's uh, 36. Okay. It's a little bit older. Mm-hmm. She was born in 83. All right. Okay. Um, so. there, I don't even feel like even the fans of the show are really that heartbroken. I've not heard much upcry and like people no. no we we want this she has one speed and it's uh uh moody uh-huh. like that's that's all she does her character from batwoman and character from orange is the new black is the same i think i don't know i've only seen the one scene oh i've seen i've uh, i've seen the whole series <laughs> have you yeah okay. very one-dimensional yeah and I think, yeah, I think she only has that one, that one gear, so. She, her and Kirsten Dunst, kind of very similar. Mm, mm, Except for mm, Ruby, mm. I don't know. She's much, she's much better looking. Yeah, I don't know, I've always been attracted to Kirsten Dunst. Really? Yeah, ever since like back in Jumanji days, I've always thought she was cute. I still think she's cute. Oh, no, 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 no. I was thinking Kirsten Stewart. Oh, oh. Excuse me. Stewart. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, Kirsten Dunst has a bit more range than that. <laughs> oh, yeah, my yeah. bad. No, yeah, Kirsten, Kirsten Stewart. I don't know. Oh, there you go. Plug her into Batwoman. You barely skip a beat. <laughs> and she's gay. There Perfect. You go. There we go. Boom. Locked it up. Done. Oh, I'm sure there would be plenty of, you know, Twilight jokes and how she's playing a bat and... Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it'd be awesome because Robert Pattinson... Oh, that's right! He's Batman. Batman! right? Ah, see? It all Boom. ties together. Yeah. Full circle. Could do another Infinite Earth thing and have those two meet. Mm. I'm liking potential here. Yeah, yeah. So, we celebrated a little bit of an anniversary. Yes. This last week. Uh, probably, I've gone back and forth on this, but I've, I've come to the conclusion that this is my favorite movie of all time. Really? Mm-hmm. Like, I can't not think of one that I have seen more over the course of my life than this one. And it's The Empire Strikes Back opened in theaters 40 years ago. <whistles> Just a couple days. Um, but the original version that played once, um, had a different ending. So the initial screening yeah. had a different ending. Uh, and here's what happened. <clears throat> so the Empire Strikes Back was initially released in about 100 theaters in 70 millimeter. Before it made the jump to wide release, Lucas decided he needed to quickly create three more shots that would help clarify something he found confusing. Namely, the physical relationship between the characters of the Millennium Falcon 
and the characters on the medical frigate where Luke was healing from his injuries in the fight with Darth Vader. As StarWars.com explains, Lucas felt the original version, which lacked these shots, was confusing and raised all kinds of questions in the minds of the viewers. Uh, this is what he says, quote, Where were Luke and Leia in relation to Chewie and Lando? Were the heroes on the same spaceship or two different ones? If the latter, where was the Millennium Falcon in relation to the Rebel Medical Frigate? In the rush of complete, completing the film, the potential hazard had been overlooked. But Lucas was never one to miss an opportunity for improvement, as we've all found out. I was about to say, like, he is always constantly, mm-hmm. like, tweaking and trying to do stuff with it. There was a generous three-week window before Empire's wider 35mm release uh, on June 18th, just enough time to create three new shots. With those three weeks... Uh, Lucas assembled a team of special effects artists to create the three shots. A view of the Rebel fleet, establishing there were more ships than just the Millennium Falcon. A closer shot of the Falcon exterior. And a pan from the Falcon exterior to the frigate. Um, Do you feel like those three shots help clarify a lot of things? No. <laughs> yeah? Because yeah. you could kind of figure it out? Yeah. I, I think it. I think it made sense. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, let's see. I'm trying to see if it, if it says exactly what the ending originally was. Uh, oh, before the Star Wars coming, it originally asked like a different ending. Instead of da 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 da. Uh, it doesn't say. Anyway, so even back then, back in 1980, <laughs> Lucas was still like, oh, I gotta change this, I gotta change this, oh. Yeah. Fans aren't gonna understand what, where the characters are, I gotta change it. Uh, well, it's gotta be difficult because this is kind of, you know, your baby, you've been working on it for countless years, like for a ton of years, right? And you, you you see these little things that, I don't know. Yeah. It ain't your baby now. Yeah. You, they paid, what, $4 billion for it? Something like that. Yeah, they uh, Disney adopted it. It's mm. their baby now. Right. Has the, have you heard of any other movies that have been tweaked when they initially got released? Um, and then To tweaked? a wide release? Yeah. Um... Not off the top of my head. No, I'm I'm sure it happens. I'm sure it happens. It has to, right? Uh, but no, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Nothing that's quite as iconic as Star Wars. I know there have been some Disney animated films and Pixar films that they were still working on literally two, three weeks before the movie was to open. Yeah. Uh, Toy Story 2 being one of them. Um, but not making like different adjustments. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. Just finishing up everything. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And that's and that's because during the creation of Toy Story two, all of the right in the middle of the data was lost. It really? was destroyed. Yeah, and so they had oh, literally had man. to start over. And and rather than push back like what they would normally do is just push back the date, right? The release mm-hmm. date. Um, they, they're like, no, we have a schedule to keep. Yep. <laughs> had to work overtime. They were working. It's a fascinating story if you go back and, and research it. They were working so hard on that film that one of the animators forgot that he had his kid in the back seat. And really? so drove up to Pixar, ran in with their kid still in the car seat and was in there for hours. Wow. <laughs> They said, luckily, make like a documentary or some sort of a movie. They really should, right? Like that would be a fascinating story to tell. Luckily, it wasn't that hot that day, <laughs> so the kid was fine. The kid survived, but yeah, that's just how stressed and how tired everybody was working on that film. Dang, yeah, it's fascinating. So, Assassin's Creed Valhalla 
could feature a boss battle with Thor and Odin. This is the newest installment. We've only seen a couple of teaser trailers for it, but it looks like they're going all in cool. in this universe. Let's fight some gods. Awesome. Right? I'm all this, about it. But this, to me, like honestly feels like they saw the ending of um, God of War. And they're like, hey, we should do this. Or they're capitalizing on the popularity of Thor at the moment. True. Um, there is a final cut scene. Like, if you do, like, spoiler alert here. If you're playing God of War and you finish it up and then you go back to his house and take a nap, when you wake up, you you know, you and your boy um, encounter Thor. Really? Yes. Yeah. He, like... That's the last last scene is somebody like slams down on the ground right in front of your house and you're like what what the hell's going on and you like grab your stuff to like go fight something and it pans out and you just kind of like see um you j- well you see like lightning hitting and then like th- kind of an outline of like Thor mm. and then you also see uh his hammer on the really? side and that like mule there yeah and then that's the end of the game hmm. Yeah, you see, kids, Thor was around thousands and thousands of years before Marvel came along. Yeah. Thousands yeah. and thousands of years. I mean, it makes sense. Um, but it'll be interesting because this seems like such a leap and such a change of pace for Assassin's Creed. True. Right? You've got all these other uh, games that have been like relatively grounded. Yeah. And then this one, they're just going, doing whatever they want. I still think Assassin's Creed should do a 1930s noir. Yeah. A gangster version. I think that'd be really freaking cool. That would be pretty awesome. Running around like you've got like a Tommy gun slung over your mm-hmm. shoulder. And mm-hmm. you, you're wearing this like, what, not fedora. Is it? What's fedora. The Stetson? The fedora. Yeah yeah. 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 That would be so cool. That would, that would be awesome. And make it kind of black and white. And, oh, that'd be. That'd be so awesome. Yeah. And you got to go and uh, try and assassinate, like, famous gangsters like Al Capone and, you know, Babyface Nelson and these guys. And... To try to become, like, the top head gangster. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be so cool. That'd be a lot of fun. I I have a sweet spot in my heart for all mobster movies. Mm. I I just love them. When they're, they're pretty done, good. Like, when they're done right. When they're done right, yeah. Public Enemies. Oh, Pretty good. Gangster Squad. Did you see that one? Yeah. It was, it was all right. I, I thought it was pretty decent. Um, I even liked, I know it's not like gangster, but it's kind of similar. Uh, Lawless mm. with Shia LaBeouf. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, I like that one. Uh, it seems to me Tom like you, you like that era of I American love it, history. Dude. Like, if I could go back in history, if I could go like Assassin's Creed style back in history... That's probably when I'd go. Back to the 1920s and 30s? Oh, yeah. I'd like it. You you don't leave the house without a three-piece suit and a hat. and yeah, Looking all classy. Everybody looking all classy. Yeah. Classy AF. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that'd cool be fun. cars. That'd be cool. One of my favorite mobster movies is uh, Dick Tracy. Okay. From 1990. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know why. The movie's kind of goofy, but man, I love that film. Uh, it's like someone, it's like a kid took like a crayon box and just colored that entire film. Like this guy has a red suit and this guy has a green suit and this guy has a yellow suit. I have all of those, the animated Very series, colorful. like all on DVD. Uh, yeah. 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 Dick Tracy, that's, that's a character they should explore again. Kind of bring him back. Yeah. Unfortunately, Warren Beatty owns all the rights. No. To Dick Tracy, and he, he's not letting it, not letting it go. Hmm. That's unfortunate. You can have Dick Tracy when you pry it from his cold dead hand. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, thank you. Um. So here's something weird. Skin crayons. <laughs> Elaborate. <laughs> mm. Crayola announces color of the world skin tone crayons. Uh, yeah. And so they're just gonna be 
different colors and it, it it's going to be colors that it's on the gradient skin tones see i actually a lot really like this idea now that like i mean i haven't colored with crayons in a long time it'll be helpful for artists right artistically speaking that would be great because like typically you like lay down like what pink and then you kind of have to use some like brown to kind of i use peach myself peach okay mm -hmm. some peach and then like yeah. Yeah. It's really it's really pretty difficult. So, want to hear some of the colors? Yes. All right, we got medium almond. We got medium deep rose. We got light medium almond, light medium rose, light almond, light rose, light medium golden, very light almond, light golden, very light rose, very light golden, extra light almond. Kind of see a, a yeah, pattern, pattern here. here. Yeah. Deepest almond. Ooh. Extra deep golden, extra deep rose. I think I'm a deepest almond. <laughs> you are not, believe me. <laughs> Come on, Troy. What the hell? I might be a cracker, but I'm not like no saltine. I'm like a Ritz. <laughs> you're like a... Let's see. I would say you're like a light medium rose. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, there's a extra deep golden, extra deep rose, extra deep almond, very deep almond, deep golden... Deep Golden. There's my 2000 band name. There you go. Deep, deep golden. golden. Medium Deep Golden. Deep Almond. Very Deep Rose. Deep Rose. Medium Deep Almond. And Medium Golden. I'm actually totally for this idea. And I would love to see a lot more artists using crayons. Yeah. Right? To create amazing pieces. Yeah. It is possible. I have seen it. I've seen YouTube videos. You can create amazing works of art with crayons. What's your biggest gripe with uh, creating artwork with crayons? Keeping the crayons sharp. Mm -hmm. uh, one. Two, the wax flakes that you get on the paper. Oh, yeah. That's a big problem. Three, crayons don't blend very well together. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because the, they get it. like kind of like... Lay yeah, they don't really blend mm. all that well. No, if you get like a deep, dark color and then try to put like a lighter color on it, it's not going to work. No, you definitely have to start with like lighter colors and then go to darker. Mm. Even then, sometimes the dark may just overtake the light color because the wax also doesn't mix with the other wax. And mm -hmm. so it it's just like layer on top of layer. Yeah. yeah. Caked on there. Yeah. 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 I I don't know. Are there any other like colors that they're missing that crayon should really venture into? Is this opening the door for them to Crayola to create more? Are they going to do this with their markers as well? Or is it just strictly crayons? I would assume right now it's just it'll probably just be strictly crayons so they can kind of cater to um children. Mhm. Mm you know, kind of, you know, start start children young thinking, you know, just because somebody's a different skin color, color than you doesn't mean that they're a bad person. Yeah. Um, skin color tolerance. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise known as not racist. Exactly. <laughs> skin color tolerance. It's <laughs> another way to put that. No, but I think I think it'd be cool if they did um I don't know, maybe maybe famous colors you could use. The maybe like uh they did like a perfect color match to like maybe top of my head, like the DeLorean for Back to the Future or Okay. Or they should do something like that. Like a movie collection or a TV show collection. Uh, like a set, I think it'd be kind of cool to have like a set that is also like soda colors, mm. right? That exact color of blue that they use on Pepsi and that exact color of orange that they use on whatever, you know? There you go. Like specific colors that people, you have to like normally try to create and duplicate mm -hmm. if they actually made like readily available. Yeah. Well, the way I would do it, if I needed a color like that, back when I had Photoshop, I just I just 
find a picture of it, mm-hmm. copy and paste it into Photoshop, yeah. do the little um, Paint, uh, or eyedropper. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grab the color. Bloop. There Bam. you have it. It's right there. Yeah. Well, okay, that's the, the faster way of well, doing yeah. it, like with crayons. No, yeah, but that'd be like, cool. Uh, Reese's orange. Yes. Right? Uh, Which is a trademark color by Hershey's, by yeah. the way. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, be able to do these certain colors. They're candy. They could do candy. Yeah. Oh. Have the Reese's orange. Have, like, the Hershey brown. Mm-hmm. I've had a few Hershey browns in my time. <laughs> Almond Joy blue. Uh, yeah. Almond Joy blue. Um, that specific M&Ms. red, like, 100 grand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can even incorporate smells. Ooh, I Guess always love that. Like when they would make those uh, markers that would smell like grape or like mm-hmm. root beer, or because then like your whole paper after you were done coloring like smelled mm-hmm. awesome. I think too many kids were overdoing it. it. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> uh, why they stopped it. Two kids um, didn't graduate dare. Like back in fifth grade, um, <laughs> they were caught by the well. So the dare teacher, or yeah, the dare cop, he went into the bathroom, the dare officer went into the bathroom and caught two kids that were huffing glue. So they didn't like, and they were wearing their dare shirts too on dare graduation day. Yeah, they were huffing glue and got caught. Um, It was actually, do you know who like Ross, little Ross Miller? I know the name. Jared Clawson's like BFF, like lived just a couple of doors down. I know the name, Ross Miller. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, his dad, like, was the dare officer, but the police officer for it. Yeah. Do you remember the, who the kids were? I don't. I, I'd probably call them out if I did. That's nah. too bad. Yeah, but they, needless to say, they did not graduate. I wouldn't think so. <laughs> no. Stupid <laughs> glue. Oh, man. One may argue that it was the dare that pushed them to that. Ooh. Maybe they wanted to experiment and see what all this drug culture was about. Dare to keep a kid off drugs. Dare, dare to keep a kid on glue. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's get to our revs and wrecks. Don't have a little soundbite for this yet. I'll get there eventually. This, um, the one movie that I did see this week, well, I rented it from a red box. I'm like, all right, I have a free code. I'm going to rent this, see what it's all about. Oh my goodness. This is the newest movie from Bloomhouse, or yeah, um, it's a Bloomhouse uh, original, mm-hmm. um, Fantasy Island. Mm hmm. Yeah. Not great from what I've heard. No. Um, The story in a nutshell is a couple of kids win, like, they're basically, they win a Willy Wonka adventure to go to Fantasy Island. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of based off the TV show, right? The Mm -hmm. TV show. Um, When they actually finally get there, they're initially greeted by this Mr. Rorky. Who's, Mm -hmm. I don't even know how to describe him. He's kind of this eccentric uh, billionaire that helps them all live out their fantasies. But he's got an ulterior motive for doing that. And I don't even care if I spoil it. His his wife died. So then his fantasy is to have her um, keep her alive. And in order to keep her alive uh, on this island... He has to um, make other people have their fantasies. But then their fantasies come true, but then they get altered and switched. There was a boy that he wanted to be a soldier, but then, like, his brother, who had already passed away, and he's wearing his dog tags, um, is there. Um, Two brothers that don't even look like each other, that are, like, completely different. Um... Their fantasy is just to, like, have lots of women and men and party it up. And Mm. it is just a disaster. And it is, like... (laughs) It's a disaster. (laughs) That's a good way to put it. It's it's horrible. Like, it makes sense. And then they have, like, a twist in it that isn't even that interesting. I, 
I was like not not, not nodding off. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna give this a chance. I'm gonna watch this. Oh man, I out of five shots, <laughs> I would have to go with point five. Wow, not even a half. Or well, is that a half? That is a half. That is a half. <laughs> yeah. It was a complete disaster. The one redeeming quality about it was... No, I can't even think of one. Wow. I, I honestly can't. Well, yeah, because that was, that was the basis of the TV show back in the day. People would come to Fantasy Island to live out these fantasies, but they would learn uh, a lesson Right. Within that fantasy. Yeah. These ones, Some they just went more for lesson. like the gore, violent, stabby, 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 stabby kind of a lesson learned. Mm. And they're mm. all tied, like they're all kind of tied together. They all have a past that's intertwined. Oh, uh, one of those. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, like, the killer was already there all along, and she's the one that planned this whole entire thing. Oh, yeah, wow. They're just pulling out all the cliches. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Which, it kind of sucks, because they did have a couple of, like, decent actors in there. Yeah. Michael Pena as as Rourke. Yeah. Mr. Rourke. Uh, Michael uh, Rocker as well. From the The Walking Dead, mm -hmm. I guess is his big. He's also from Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which it was unfortunate to see those guys. I don't know. Do such a crappy movie. <laughs> such a yeah garbage. Yeah, yeah. Movie. Lucy Hale, Maggie Q, Portia Doubleday. Oh, whatever the heck that is. <laughs> Double D is that what you said? <laughs> I don't know. I've got. To, I can only see it from the neck up. Oh. Uh, Jimmy O. Yang, I don't know who that is. Yeah, Michael Pena, Ryan Hansen. Well, there's a bunch of young, pretty people in this. Yeah, you're not alone. Tomato meters at eight <laughs> percent. Yeah. The audience scores at forty-eight percent. How is that even possible? From three thousand five hundred and sixty-six. I ratings. honestly like back in the day when Bloomhouse originally you know, started dropping these movies. I'm like, this is the company. Like, this is like a fantastic unity here. Ooh, now they're hitting it out of the park. Yeah. They were having like smash hit after smash hit. And then all of a sudden, I think they just said like, oh yeah, we'll do this movie. Oh yeah, we'll give you some money to make this movie. Yeah. And they don't care anymore about quality. It's quantity, just like their whole um, paranormal movies and Saw movies. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. They went that same route, and it's unfortunate. Because they're coming out with, like, another Conjuring movie as well. Yeah, that's a franchise that needs to die. Mm-hmm. You know, I wish... <sighs> because the first Paranormal Activity movie was really good. Right. And really innovative and really cool. Mm-hmm. And the same with, um... <sighs> The other movies you mentioned. The Saw? <laughs> the Saw movies. Yeah. The first Saw film. Really cool. Right. Very innovative. But then they just got it, a... It kind of seemed like this, you know, psychological horror, thriller kind of a thing. Mystery. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they just... It was like the go bone off the collector. Deep end. Yeah. Something. It, just go off the deep end and... Milk it for all it's worth. Yeah. And the first Conjuring movie was so good. Yeah. And they and they I even liked, ruin it. really liked uh, Sinister as well. Sinister was great. Insidious, yeah. yeah. These first ones, Sinister was so I I watched a, a YouTube video on that the other day. It's this movie or this YouTube channel called uh, uh, Dead Meat, where they count up all the kills from horror films. Yeah. So I was watching it again. I'm like, I forgot how good that movie was. Oh, it's fantastic. The it has one... one of the most haunting opening scenes <laughs> you'll see in a long time, but yeah. it's really good. Yeah. And then they just kind of milked it and ruined it. Yeah, and then they had, had Sinister 2. Ugh. Ugh. Well, yeah. Sinister 2, here comes the kids. That's what it should have been called. Mm -hmm. Ghost kids. 
which it wasn't even that scary. That kid uh, running around with a camera and also a sigh. Yeah. It was like I could just kind of put my hand there and stop him from doing anything or just hit him with yeah. a broom. It's a kid. Yeah, it's a kid. with, And he's got this like this big ass camcorder that's not even like, I don't know. He couldn't really run around with it. Yeah. It was kind of clunky. At least in the first Sinister One, and spoilers, how the the kid kills her family, mm-hmm. she drugged them all. Yeah. So that, okay, that makes sense. It seemed more plausible. Yeah. They can't move. They're, Ooh, yeah. that lawnmower scene. Oh, oh. yeah yeah <laughs> it's cool and i love like it's very artistically filmed i love how they flip to his, like his glasses mm-hmm. so you don't actually like see that otherwise man that would be gruesome yep or the one where the family's tied up on the on the, the chairs by the pool yeah and they just get pulled in one by one yeah just like Oh, man. But it seemed it's plausible. Dark. And then just when you thought you figured it out, they put a twist to it that it was actually really cool. Yeah. One thing I did learn about that is a lot of the effects in the first Sinister one were practical. Mm-hmm. Like, those were actors tied to chairs that they pulled into the pool. Seriously? Yeah. Dang. And they had divers just off camera ready to give them oxygen. Wow. And when you see the guy, I don't think he has a name. The demon, whoever, mm-hmm. in the pool. The actor was actually in the pool. Seriously? Walking around, yeah. Ugh. He had, like, weighted shoes so he could walk and stay down in the pool. Dang. Yeah. That is, that is awesome. It's, that, it's a really good film. It is. Uh, That one scene where he's watching it and all of a sudden he pops up mm-hmm. as well. Ooh, creepy. Or I think there was, a like, a picture to the side of him. Mm-hmm. Like you saw him like you saw him in profile and he saw the picture and he saw him in the picture turn and look at him. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, right. It's it's oh man. I want to watch it again. Same. It's a good movie. And um, I feel like there are certain moments that were good about the other ones, but not enough good to actually merit another film. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Um, I did like, there was a couple of scenes, okay, in the second one where he's inside the church and he kind of puts the camera down or like the, um, flashlight down and then Mm -hmm. brings it back up and it keeps like moving as it's moving towards him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was kind of cool looking. (sighs) And I'll, I'll say the last Conjuring movie that was in that universe that they did where the, the ghosts had pennies on their eyes. Mm Mm-hmm. And so you saw the reflection of the pennies on their eyes, and when they shine a light out at them, the ghost would disappear, and the pennies would drop right on the on on the floor. That was a cool effect. Yes, I thought that was really cool. Mm-hmm. So there are moments in these films, right? But you know, a, a good moment does not a good movie make. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Like, they had all these cool scenes and moments that they wanted to do, and then they're like, well, how do we kind of connect it together yeah, to make yeah, a movie? Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yep. Um. So yeah. don't watch Fantasy Island. That's what we're saying. No, do not. <laughs> Go watch Sinister if you haven't seen it. Yes. And the first Conjuring. And the first Paranormal Activity. And they just stop there. Don't watch the sequels. Yes. Forget that they even exist. Yeah. So, I have a recommendation. Yes. It's uh, something I did this week that I think I think everybody should do at some point. Okay. You've heard the term staycation, right? Yes. Well, I took a little staycation. Okay. Uh, I worked last week 10 days straight. Okay. I was burned out. So, I was home on my first day off. After getting off work, I'm sitting down here. It's like, well, what am I going to do these next two days? Power goes out. I'm like, oh. <laughs> this is annoying. So, then my laptop quickly dies and, you know, my phone's going to die. And, you know, my Nintendo Switch, you know, that's going to die. I can't charge it because the power is staying off. I'm like, oh. okay. So, I thought to myself, you know what I'm going to do? I treat myself. Something I've always wanted to do. I'm going to go stay at a hotel by myself for yeah. the next couple of days and just relax. And yeah. that's exactly what I did. Okay. I went to the Hampton Inn yeah. and I just spent two days doing absolutely nothing. And it was fantastic. Really? Yeah. yeah. I stayed in. I, I stayed in bed. I got myself 
some sodas. I ordered myself some food. Yeah. And I just sat there and watched movies on HBO and and <laughs> watched an Office marathon and watched a South Park marathon and watched Ghostbusters 1 and 2 and yeah. And Feel that's all rejuvenated I did. and like I did. Yeah. After that the, the next day I was like I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go back to work. Let's do this. Uh, see like it's difficult with myself cuz even when I'm like playing video games I want to be multitasking so i'll throw in like a load of laundry Mm -hmm. or i'll be doing like something else or while i'm watching like a tv show i'll be doing the dishes or yeah i don't know just i I constantly always want to multitask and i i feel like i don't know if i could i don't know if i could do that like even when i'm on vacation i'm just like okay now like you know thinking out other things that we're going to be doing on the vacation and i don't know it's difficult for me to i don't think i could take a vacation with you what i think it'd be hard no, see, okay, I like I don't, to... I don't think you know... I well, Okay, not that you don't know, but I think it's hard for you to relax. Yeah. 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 Because, uh, even when I even when I do, like, take a nap or something, sometimes I'll feel guilty that I'm like, ah, I could have been doing, like, these <laughs> other things. Wow. So, I know. Yeah, I don't feel guilty about doing that. <laughs> but it was great. I had such a good time. I'm, I'll, I'd probably be doing that... I don't know, another couple of months, probably. Yeah, just every once in a while, take a vacation. Yeah. yeah, I and I highly recommend it to anybody listening. If you're stressed out, Which if you have the... the funds to do it, yeah. Because well, here's the thing: you want to go to at least a nicer hotel, right? Right. <laughs> no motel six, kind of. A, yeah, yeah. You don't want to go to any seedy spot, <laughs> especially right now, because. I did research and I found out, you know, that these guys, um, you know, everybody's wearing masks and gloves and the, cr- the cleaning crews wearing masks and gloves and yeah. sterilizing everything. So I knew I was okay. Plus, it was on a weekday. Who the heck's going to be there? Right. Right. Actually, a surprising number of people people that second day. You just walk sure. around in a robe? You just don't. <laughs> no. All okay. right. No. See, I. I like to be wearing clothes all the time. Yeah. Yeah. All I right. think I mentioned that before. Yeah. Like, even if I, by myself, I could have spent the entire 48 hours completely nude, but I didn't. <laughs> I wore clothes the whole time. Uh, yeah. See, I'm not just the opposite. I don't have to See, wear that's another reason like I can't go on vacation with you. <laughs> hey, what's up, Troy? Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cover that robe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it it was it was a lot of fun. I didn't. I wasn't even planning on staying two days. I was only planning on staying one. I'm like, do you want a second day? I'm like, all right. Or you missed checkout? No, I, I was sitting there. Checkout was at noon on the first day. I was sitting there ten o'clock. I'm like, oh, I don't want to go home. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, well. So I went down to the main desk. I'm like, I'd like to stay another day. <laughs> I go, okay. All right. Sure. Sweet, but yeah, it was a it was a blast. I had, I had a lot of fun. Much needed. Mm-hmm. Much needed. Yes. Okay, that wraps it up. We've gone a little longer this episode, but I think there was a lot of uh, good discussion this time. Yeah. So I think that balanced it all out. Okay, so here's where you can find us. You can listen to all of our episodes at worldwarg.podbean.com. We're also on iTunes, Google Play, and CosmicPotatoNetwork.com. On uh, the social media, you can find us at Facebook.com slash WorldWarGPodcast. We're also on Twitter and Instagram. Just search at WWGPodcast. You can also find our merchandise at shop dot spreadshirt dot com slash world war g you can also email us anytime day or night at world wg podcast at gmail dot com you can also call or text the show at any time at three eight five two four zero one six nine two just leave a message so this has been world war g episode two seventy yeah episode two seventy that has been Adrian. That has been Troy. Stay geeky, my friends. 
wash your hands and treat yourself. Treat yourself.